Welcome to this Wise Owl Answers video. This question came in on a video about working with date fields in pivot tables. And what this viewer wants to know is, can we group items in a pivot table by numbers rather than by dates? And we certainly can do that. We have a few basic choices for how we can make the grouping work. So let's take a look and see what we can do. To get started, I've created an Excel workbook with my fairly familiar list of movies, and I've already written some basic code to create a simple pivot table and assign some fields to it. So we can see that in the Visual Basic Editor, there's the simple code. I'm not going to go into detail about how this part works, simply because we've already covered that in a previous playlist. So if you need a quick reminder of how to create basic pivot tables, this is your reference point. I'll drop a link in the video description so you can just download this basic code and dataset. All I'm going to do here is run the subroutine to create a new worksheet called Pivot with this simple pivot table assigning the runtime field to the row groups, the certificate field to the column groups, and the sum of Oscar wins to the data area of the pivot table. Next, I'd like to group the values in the runtime row groups so that we don't see one separate row for each unique value in that column. To do that, I've got to reference one single cell in this column, and I always think it makes sense to start with the first cell, so I'm going to get a reference to cell A5 first. Let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and I'm just going to create a new subroutine at the top of the module to do this. We'll keep the Create Movie Pivot Table subroutine as it is, and create a new sub called Group by Numbers. If I know that I'm already on the correct worksheet, I can simply refer to the cell I'm interested in, so let's say Range A5, and then look for and apply the Group method. Now there are a few optional parameters of the group method. If I type in a space immediately after that, you can see their names, but they're all optional. They're all listed in square brackets. So I'm just gonna see what happens when we omit all of the optional parameters. Let's just run that subroutine. Head back to the Excel worksheet and find that Excel's decided to group the numbers in that range in sets of 10. So it's starting with the lowest possible value it found in that column, 68, and then grouped them in units of 10. Now there are various things we can do using these optional parameters to change the way this grouping works. First of all, let's try to change the size of the buckets that the values are grouped in. So rather than grouping by 10, let's say we want to group by 50. To do that, we can head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and then at the end of the group method, type in a space, and I want to reference the by parameter. So I'm going to type in by colon equals, and then I'm going to specify that I want to group by 50 rather than by 10. And if we simply run the subroutine again, head back to the Excel worksheet, we'll find that we've achieved what we wanted. We can also change which value Excel uses as the starting point for the grouping. By default, it uses the minimum value it finds in the runtime column, 68. I want to change that to start at 51. So to do that, we can head back to the Visual Basic Editor head to the end of the group line, type in a comma, and this time we'll reference the start parameter. So start colon equals, and then the value 51. We could also optionally provide an end value. So if we didn't want to carry on grouping until the maximum value of that field, we could add an end value there as well. But I'm gonna leave that one off for the time being. So having done that, we can run the subroutine again. And if we switch back to the Excel worksheet, we'll find that our grouping now begins at 51 and it all looks a little bit more pleasing. Next, I'd like to look at a slightly better way to get a reference to the first cell in the row label section. At the moment, we're relying on the fact that this is always going to be cell A5, but that might not necessarily be the case. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And I'm going to start by declaring a couple of extra variables just to help. So I'm going to start with dim pt as pivot table and then dim pf as pivot field. I'm then going to set pt to be equal to worksheets. The name of the worksheet is called pivot. And then I want to refer to the first pivot table on there. I've also given the pivot table a name, by the way, so it's called movie pivot. So I could reference this pivot table in a couple of different ways. I could either say pivot tables one, or I could use its name movie pivot. So either will work happily. 
Then I want to use the PF variable to get a reference to the pivot field whose name is run time. So let's say set PF equals PT dot pivot fields and then refer to the runtime field by name. Okay, now that we've done that, I can get a reference to that particular pivot field's label range. And I want to capture a reference to that in another variable. So let's head up to the top again and say dim r as range. And then I can say set r equals pf dot label range. Now that particular property references the cell containing the word row labels. So in this case, it's cell A4. I want to reference the cell immediately below that. So I'm going to add a dot offset property to the end of the label range, one row down and zero columns to the right. Then what I can do is change the range A5 to say R, so r.group, and just to demonstrate that it is still working, let's change our numbers. Let's, let's group by 100, and we'll start at a value of 1 rather than 51. So having done all that, we can run the subroutine again, and we'll find that we've changed the grouping using a completely different way to reference the first cell in the row label section. So this technique is a little more flexible because it doesn't now matter where we create our pivot table on the new worksheet. If we head back to the Visual Basic editor and maybe make a modification to the Create Movie Pivot Table subroutine, let's set our table destination to cell, what should we go for, uh, C5? Why not? Cell C5 will do. So if we run this subroutine again to create a new movie pivot table, it removes the existing worksheet first. So our row labels this time begins in cell C7. If we head back to the Visual Basic Editor and we run our group by numbers subroutine again, we'll see, still see that our table is grouped correctly because we're referencing the row label cell relatively rather than by absolute cell reference. One thing that our current code doesn't handle very well is if we decide to change which field we use for the row groups. So again, if we head back to the Visual Basic Editor and we change the grouping field, the row field, from runtime, let's change this one to the budget field instead. If we run this subroutine now, it will create a new pivot table showing the values of the budget field. But if we then headed back and tried to run our group by numbers subroutine, because this time it's trying to refer to the runtime field, it will fail. It can't get the label range of the runtime field if it's not displayed in the pivot table. So in order to fix this, let's just hit the end button here. I'm going to change the way we refer to the range R. So we're not going to bother with this pivot field variable. In fact, let's comment out the set PF and the dim PF lines. I'm also just going to comment out the set R line there. I'll keep that in there just for reference. And instead, I'm going to say set R equals PT dot row range. So the row range refers to the block of cells which makes up the row labels area, including the top cell there, cell C6 in this case, the one with row labels in it. I want to refer to the cell that is in the first column and the second row of the row labels uh, group or the, uh, the row range. So rather than just saying row range, I'm going to say row range dot cells and then in some round brackets, go for row number two and column number one. So having done that, we haven't fixed this to any particular field any longer. I think I should probably update the way the grouping works perhaps, rather than going in groups of 100, maybe something like 100 million might be more appropriate. And again, we'll start at a value of one. So if we run this subroutine again and have a look back at the Excel worksheet, there we go. We've got our data now grouped by um, the budget field without having to specify that it was the budget field we were grouping by. Just to demonstrate that that works and happily updates itself, let's maybe change the grouping one more time so that we group by the box office field. So heading back to the original subroutine, we can change budget to say box office 
or bow office if I, as I've typed it. Let's go for box office, the correct field name, and then we can run that subroutine. So we have a new pivot table, this time showing the values of the box office field. And then if we head back to the group by numbers subroutine uh, and then just run it one more time. So it works quite happily with no failures, grouping the box office values instead. So there we go, that's how to use VBA to group a pivot table by a numeric field. Hopefully that's enough to answer the original question, but if not, feel free to carry on asking more questions and I'll do my best to keep on answering them. Thanks very much for watching, we'll see you next time.